What is something illegal you have done and got away without getting caught? I used to have a total lead foot. One day, I was driving to my ex-wife's parents house by myself. They lived in a small town right off of the freeway. Now, on the freeway I was driving about 80 miles per hour, 130 kilometers per hour, which was standard for most drivers. When you pull off the freeway, it immediately drops to 25 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. So, I pull onto this main drag and start driving through the town. I'm about a mile down when suddenly I notice a police car pull up behind me. I look down and see that I'm driving at 45 miles per hour, 70 kilometers per hour. A few things hit all at once, first, I couldn't afford a ticket. I was 20 miles over. I would have ended up with a dollar 200 plus ticket just because I failed to decelerate. I was only three blocks from my in-laws, and the officer hadn't turned on his lights yet. For reasons only known to me, I immediately pulled over, turned off the car and started walking. The officer pulled up behind me, not knowing what to do, but still with no lights turned on. I just kept walking without turning around. I get to my in-laws and tell them what happened. They tell me that I have to go back for my car, so I do. The officer was gone. No consequences whatsoever, never received a ticket in the mail, never heard a thing. I would never, ever do it again. And that's how I got out of a major speeding violation. I brought two or three Cuban cigars back to the US from Montreal once. When we cleared the border I turned to my parents and used my favorite line from Future Armor. Guess what your accessories to? Edit, it was 2004. I am well aware this is no longer illegal. I stole my own car from the tow impound lot, best part was getting the certified letter months later that they were going to auction it if I didn't come and pay for it. My friends and I didn't pay for our dinner at Steak and Shake this past weekend. I stood waiting at the register trying to pay for 20 minutes but no one came to take my money. It was 12.30am before we left. I might, I say might, have a few pence from work in my drawer at home. This is not an admission of wrongdoing, nor can I attest to how they got there. If they're even there. I once kept a dead otter in my freezer after finding it on the side of the road. In the UK this can get a hefty fine and prison time without a license. Once I found out I released the dead otter into the wild. It was a bit like free willy but with less movement. Stole a blue angels flag from the hangar they were parked in. When I was in the navy the blue angels visited the air base I was stationed at. They proceeded to kick all of our planes out of our hangar and I had to fix our birds out in the rain. In a fit of contempt, on the last day they were there, I went into the mess and stole the flag hanging from the overhead beams. I still have the flag and wear it like a cape from time to time. Assisted in semi-stealing a car. Almost two decades ago my cousin calls my dad and says his car broke down. As my dad has friends with heavy equipment he figured my dad could get a trailer to tow it on. So my dad my uncle and I go pick up a flatbed tow truck from a friend of his then drive two hours to pick up the car. We find it near where it should be on the side of the highway so we load it up and go to a rest stop to secure it on the truck better. As my dad and my uncle are attaching straps I'm looking at the car and notice something is odd. My cousin's car late 80's Audi, had broken speakers for whatever reason they all stopped work so instead of replacing them with with normal speakers he used house tower speakers big ones at that back seat and passenger seat. I'm noticing there aren't any tower speakers in the car I pointed this out and they stop and start looking at the car then check the plate number they don't match cousin had a vanity plate, my dad immediately hooks the call raises the bed and lets it roll off into a space at the rest area. We hop into the truck and drive off to find the car. We find it less than a mile away. Audi reliability jokes aside what are the odds of two identical Audis same year color and even rims and tires being broken down that close to each other. We I was a teenager, my Labrador got out of the yard and I finally found him at the pound with a bullet in his shoulder. I had to put him down. I inadvertently found out who did it. I spray painted his Corvette. After he got it repainted, I did it again. 
Editing for clarity. This was a small town in the late 70s, I did tell the cops when he was shot but we didn't know by who, they said they could do nothing. As far as I remember even when I found out who did it they said they couldn't help me. I found out who did it because my sister went to a party and a guy there was talking about a dog he shot. He lived in the same block where animal control picked my injured dog up. Of course I took my dog to the vet, but as a poor 16 year old, I did not have the funds needed for surgery. If I recall correctly it was $400, which would have been a small fortune for me. I had the vet put him down. He was a sweet lab, I bawled my eyes out for weeks. One of the local cops was a family friend, he put two and two together, and after the second paint job, he stopped by my work and mentioned what happened to this guy's car, and looked at me and said he hoped it wouldn't happen again. I took the hint and left him alone after that. This all happened over 40 years ago, but to the best of my recollection, that is what happened. I found out that this specific guy stole my phone, from checking previous text on my account and calling numbers they were in contact with. He wouldn't admit he stole it, so I broke into his house via balcony, stole his laptop, and left a singed note to meet me and return my phone to get his laptop back. It totally worked and everyone got their stuff back. I accidentally shoplifted some pudding cups once. I was at Target and was buying a couple of large bags of dog food which were in the basket part of the cart and several smaller items that were in the top part of the cart. I had tossed the pudding cups into the basket part before I put the dog food bags in and forgot they were there when I put all the smaller items on the belt to be rung up. They were hidden from view when the dog food bags were scanned. I saw them when I was putting the dog food bags into the trunk. If the lines weren't so long I would have gone back to pay for them, but 20 plus minutes for a 99 cent item, I can live with that. If it were a more expensive item I would have returned to pay for it. I once overslept for an oral English exam. So I forged the letter I received with the date, and moved it to following week. Showed it to my English teacher and she said it was probably a mistake, but I had to show it to the school dean as well to get approval for a reschedule. I showed the forged letter to him and he instantly, instantly, found a mistake I made in the letter and just casually said that the letter looked badly copied. I was sweating bullets at that point, because forging a letter for an exam is a pretty harsh offence and could have gotten me suspended. But he just shrugged it off and gave me permission for a reschedule. I guess since I wasn't a troublemaker he just gave me a pass. The dean was one of the cooler teachers at school though. He loved Spongebob and if he gave you detention work, you had to make a Spongebob figure with a sponge and such. Worked at a car dealership, broke many finance and insurance fraud laws on a daily basis for years. Most finance managers do and may not even be aware of it. I stole a piece of obsidian from biology class. At the next lesson biology teacher came to our classroom and forced us to admit who stole an obsidian. But I didn't. I was like 6 years old in a grocery store with my mom. She tells me to hold on to the gallon of apple juice because there was no more room in the cart for it. And I duck in loved apple juice. So being an absolute compliant little shit, I held on to the juice as she went through the checkout line. Kept holding it as we left to the car, on the way home, and all the way to the fridge to hand it to her to put it in the right spot. Only then did she realize that we never paid for it. I said but you told me to hold on to it. She just looks at me dumbfounded, then deadpan tells me not to mention it to anyone else, that it was an accident, and that we are keeping it. In summary, stole apple juice, didn't get in trouble, and got to drink the entire gallon of that sweet ass nectar of the gods by myself. I visited an abandoned building. Someone called the police and 30 minutes later we saw firefighters walking into the huge building just to search us. Luckily we saw it when we were already out. I was visiting the beach, and when walking home with a friend from a bar at 4am on a Sunday night, we came across a jet ski on the beach being bounced around by the waves. My friend convinced me to ride it back with him the next mile to where we were staying. So we rode it in the ocean in pitch black while a storm was out in the distance cool, not scary. 
When we got to our place, we rode it around until the sun came up and then I found the jet ski registration, found the guy on Facebook, played the good guy and messaged him and told him hey I found your jet ski at X location on the beach, then went inside. It was a pretty thrilling experience. I don't know how illegal it was considering it was a jet ski just left in the ocean, and I returned it, but it was still pretty fun. Edit, wow this blew up, smiley face. Edit 2, so I left out the part where I tried to start the jet ski, but it didn't start. It was pretty stressful because the waves were pretty big and I wasn't wearing swimming clothing. So when it didn't start, we walked a mile to a gas station and filled a Gatorade bottle with gas, got an Uber back to the jet ski, filled the jet ski with gas, and it still didn't start. I then realized the cutoff switch was set to off instead of on, and I should have checked this because I have my own jet ski, but I forgot to check it, thanks alcohol. So we wasted way too much time getting gas. When I was high school, my mom and I went to Walgreens to drop out my prescription for Vyvanse, ADHD stimulant for those who don't know, and the pharmacist, who knew I regularly got 60 pills for a 30 day supply told my mom that the prescription indicated only 30 pills, not 60. She told my mom that in order to get the right number of pills, she would have to have my psychiatrist rewrite the prescription. Well, I was out of pills and hit school the next day, so my mom was freaking out. She came back to the car with the prescription and explained that there was a line missing on a symbol used by the psychiatrist to indicate the number of pills per daily dose and she was on the verge of a panic attack. I took the prescription sheet, observed the ink color and thickness, and asked my mom for a black pen. I carefully drew the extra line and told my mom to drive to the right aid down the street and I went in to turn in the prescription to get filled. I got my medication and we went home. TL, doctor my psychiatrist fucked up my prescription and I fixed it with a pen, forging the writing of a licensed professional. I went to see Joe Biden speak during a campaign rally for the general election in 2008. It was at an apple orchard and the people who owned it had a basket of apples for Joe Biden and his staff by the stage. As soon as he left I, along with half of the front row, got up and stole some of Joe's apples. They were among the best I've ever had. Sorry Mr. Vice President, but if I had the chance I'd steal your apples all over again. When I went backpacking through Europe I bought an airsoft pistol in Italy. A replica Beretta 92Fs, nickel plated. It looked real, it was heavy, I could have pointed it at you and you would think it was real. Because I'm a ducking idiot, I decided to bring it home to Canada with me. I packed it in my checked baggage, big backpack, and didn't think anything of it. Until I arrived back in Toronto, and was asked to put my bag in the x-ray machine at customs. At this point I realized. Holy fuck, I'm bringing a gun into the country, replica handguns are completely illegal. I would have been in a shitload of trouble, and I started to panic. Lucky me, I remembered exactly how I had packed the pistol, so when I lay the bag on the conveyor belt, I laid it down so that the x-ray wouldn't see the profile of the pistol. When the bag went through the machine, you could clearly see the gun, but it was at an angle facing away, so rather than a pistol shape it was just a metal rectangle. The inspection agent slash guy slash whatever stopped the belt, pointed directly at the chunk of metal and said what's that? I looked him dead in the eye and said it's a toy. The next few seconds felt like an eternity. I could feel my pulse pounding in my neck. I was terrified. But then he just said okay welcome home and let me go. I retrieved my bag, walked into the main terminal, then went and threw up in the nearest garbage can. Yay, I was dumb. But I got away with it. Edit, I've been informed that these airsoft pistols are not, in fact illegal. My entire life is a sham. I went into CVS for three things, deodorant, the specific pencils I like to use, and a notebook. I grabbed the deodorant, perused the office supply aisle and saw they didn't have the pencils I wanted, so I decided it wasn't worth it to get the notebook either. Feeling like my trip was a failure, I left. Walked out of CVS with the deodorant in my hand. No alarm went off, 
No employee stopped me. About three steps outside of the door, I realized I just stole, however unintentionally. So I walked back in, bought the deodorant and three other items out of guilt. A few years ago I was working at Waffle House on the graveyard shift. One of my co-workers got really ducked up on shift, fistful of Xanax plus two four locos plus bowl of weed. Right at the busy time, she blacks out, and face planted onto the waffle iron I had just preheated. She burned a grid mark into her face, I had to pull her off but some of her face skin came off. Called an ambulance, never saw her again, worked the rest of the shift by myself. I was so shook up, was like 17 at the time, that I didn't realize until after I got home that I never cleaned her face skin off the waffle iron before the breakfast rush. So, I accidentally ended up feeding a few people waffles with human face cooked into them. I was going on a camping trip with some friends and brought my gun because bears and such. I was traveling to a state that recognizes my concealed carry permit, but I had to pass through a state that didn't. I forgot to stop before crossing the border to unload the gun and lock it in its case away from the ammo. I should be in jail for life slash s. Funny enough, I did the same trip the next year but remembered and just had it unloaded from the get go. I got pulled over for license plate light not working, and the cop asked if I had any weapons. I said yes, he then asks if it's loaded. I tell him no, it's locked in the case away from the ammo. Why? He asked. I explain I had to travel through X state which doesn't recognize my CC permit. Well you're not in X anymore, you're in Y load that shit up. He still wrote me a ticket, 